In our last video, we created the top and bottom molds for our pen holder. In this one, we'll create the cores to extract these posts out the side so the mold actually becomes separable. First thing we want to do is collapse our mold back down by rolling back our bar. Then we'll select the core tool off of the mold tools bar. We'll go into wireframe mode so we can see our internals. And we'll select the face that we wish to extract the core from. Now, these are the two circles we wish to extract on this side. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a vertical line as a reference, right up the center of the part. Then we'll create a center rectangle, the bottom of which is anchored to the parting surface, and we will encompass both, both holes without going outside the boundaries of the part. That looks pretty good. When we exit our sketch, we should take us straight into the core tool. And we'll extrude the core up to the next surface, which should take us right up to the part. That looks pretty good. So we'll select OK, return to a solid view and separate our mold again by moving forward the rollback bar. As you can see, it left our newly formed core intact, so we'll move it in the z-axis two inches to pull it out from the part. Go to Features, Move Copy, Z, two inches. That looks pretty good, so we'll repeat the process for the other side. Collapse it back down, go to wireframe, spin them around, select our core tool, the face we wish to extract the core from, and we need to remember this time we're using the other two circles, the bottom two larger ones. We'll create our center line for reference and draw our rectangle again. Now if you don't encompass the parts with which you extract completely, you'll get errors. Looks like the top part of my rectangle there is really close to those circles if not intersecting them. So I'll smart dimension it just a slight bit bigger. Since it's fixed on the bottom line to the parting surface, only the top line should move. There we go. We'll exit out and exit our sketch and see how this looks. Okay, now it looks on the right and left sides as though we didn't quite go out far enough with our rectangle. We got a little bit of intersection with the plugs there. So we'll go back in and smart dimension the width just a slight bit larger. Since the rectangle is fixed on that center line, it should increase in size equally on both sides. Let's give that a try. See if that's big enough. SolidWorks is pretty good about telling you when you've messed up and it's clearly telling me I've messed up here. Apparently that's not quite large enough. So we'll go in and make it yet a little larger. Yep, it's still overlapping the edge there. So we'll just increase it to 1.8. Let's see how that looks. Return to a solid view.
move our bar down. And it left behind our core. So we'll move that out negative two inches in the Z axis. Go to features. Move copy. In the Z axis, negative two inches. And there we have our side cores. Now it's wise to go and save your individual mold parts into their own files so that they can be machined and cammed individually. Go up to solid bodies. We'll select our top mold. Right click and we'll insert it in, into a new part. And then we'll save that as top mold. Close that out and we'll repeat it for the bottom mold. We'll call that guy bottom mold. And we'll repeat for each of the side cores. Now we can individually modify each one of those. Save him as core one, and we'll save the next one as core two. And that's how you build extractable cores. And there you have it the completed mold for your pen holder. Enjoy!